Hello everyone. Well, this is another video for you collectors and enthusiasts because you can't actually buy this vacuum cleaner anymore. Certainly not brand new. This is uh, not quite vintage, but it has been discontinued for quite some years. It's a Hoover Sprint 1600 watt no bag replacement cylinder vacuum cleaner. This was one of the earlier models to come out of China when Hoover ceased production in the UK and Europe and moved to China. This was among the first of the Chinese batch. So it dates, I would say, from the early 2000s, if memory serves me right. This cleaner used to belong to me. Well, in legally and officially, it still does belong to me. But it's one I gave my mum so she could use it to clean the car and things. So it's been battered about uh, like a vacuum cleaner is normally battered about. But um, it still works. And I'm going to take you through the main features and functions of this machine in this little video for you. So I've taken the hose off in order to concentrate at the moment on the main body of the cleaner. There's nothing exciting or special about this vacuum. It has the features you'd expect, the basic features that most cylinder vacuum cleaners have nowadays and have for some time. So obviously the basic features include an automatic cord rewind. So you've got the button here, you pull out the flex, use the machine and then it rewinds. It's a little bit sluggish, have to help it along. It's pretty common on many cheaper vacuums. They only go so far and then you're having to shove it in manually. Apart from on the top here, the automatic cord rewind button, we've got this button here, which is a combined on off and speed control button. A nice use of uh, two features in one button. So you press it once with your hand or your foot to turn the machine on, and then you can adjust the power. There's no um, markings as such, it just says minimum, maximum. So you just basically turns all that way to full power and all that way to minimum and whatever you want in between. So there's no real indication of what setting you've got it on. You just have to really judge yourself by the suction and the noise level. Hose inlet here and at the top we've got your little catch that allows you access into the dust bag compartment. Now although it says no bag replacement, this machine in the originally would have come with a lifetime cloth bag with a slide off clip. But somewhere along the line, I don't know how, during storage of this machine, the actual collar on the reusable bag, which was made of a plastic, quite a brittle plastic as I found out, that somehow got all cracked. So it rendered it useless. So I could have bought a new lifetime bag for this, which would have cost about 10 pounds, I think at the time, but I opted to buy the disposable pack of five bags which were available. I'm not sure if these are genuine ones. I think they may be, but I know Hoover certainly did genuine bags for this machine, even though it was available with a lifetime bag. So here's the bag. The slides out for replacement. Very small bag compartment. And we've got your standard motor protection filter or pre-motor filter that you can wash. In fact I've given this machine a bit of a clean before I've shown you it because obviously being used it uh, was a bit dirty. So that's your standard initial filter to protect the motor from any dust getting into it. In theory that is of course. So that's that and then the bag just slides back in all the way into the holder. Make sure it's tucked in, it doesn't get trapped in between the lid and the seal that runs all the way around the bag compartment. So that's that. We have a motor diffuser, it's more a diffuser than a filter, on the exhaust vent at the back. Oops. Again I've cleaned that, that was quite dusty so Obviously not very good at filtering this machine, it doesn't claim any sort of 
filtration, doesn't say microfiltration, let alone HEPA. So because it was used, it's normally used outside to clean the car, the filtration doesn't really matter. So that's the exhaust filter slash diffuser. And the motor's all sealed up in there. There's no way your hands or a child's hands could touch anything that would be live. It's completely sealed in. And with this machine, you can't see, but the motor, instead of uh, lying horizontal, like a lot of cleaners would be horizontal, is actually mounted vertically inside here. I only know that, I can't show you again, I should have shown you when I had this out, but when the filter's out you can actually see, you can't see the motor, but you can see the casing around the motor and it does point vertically. Right, so that's that. Pop that down. You've got two, I don't know what you'd call them, nodules, whatever, they just help stand the machine upright for storage and when you're cleaning the stairs, but of course when you are cleaning the stairs it does tend to block off <laughs> completely the exhaust vent. Many cleaners do this, it's a silly thing, but your machine, if used for a long period like that, could overheat because the air is escaping as efficiently as it should be when the machine's in its normal operating position. You've also got furniture guard that wraps not completely right the way round, but it goes most of the way around, stops stops here and here and goes all the way around the front. Underneath we've got your wheels. Quite unusually for such a small cleaner, it's all casters. A lot of budget machines would have say two wheels at the back and just one swivel at the front. But this Hoover Studio, no it's a Hoover Sprint. No, Hoover Studio is another machine, don't have that anymore. Hoover Sprint it's got this, and considering this is a Chinese made machine, these casters are very smooth running and very tough. Obviously this machine's got scratched up because it's been used, as like I say, as a car vacuum and it's been pulled along the driveway, it's not been looked after. But it's in one piece and, you know, it's quite tough. I'm not going to drop it down the stairs or anything, but for a Chinese made machine, even a sort of an early Chinese made machine, it's quite good. I'm not sure if the quality is as good as this now on Hoover cleaners. Depends, you know, it's a bit hit and miss sometimes which models are good. Some do have weak points. All manufacturers, even the, the decent brands, the German brands, sometimes they have some weaknesses. We've got your parking bracket here, which helps to keep all the tube and hose together when you're storing or carrying the machine. And you've got your rating plate showing the various details, the model number. Can't read that while I'm showing it to you. There we go. And it's Hoover model TW1650001. I don't know if we can date it from this serial number, but it's serial 39000111. 0412-7313 made in PRC, it's got the uh, CE markings, double insulated and various other markings on the machine, not really sure what they mean, I'll have to look those up but basically I think it means it's been tested for electrical safety is that everything to show you on the machine? yes, I think that's the cleaner itself despite the three wheels, it's not that stable if you tug it, you know, a bit too vigorously, it will go like that. So, despite the wheels running quite smoothly when I've got it like this, when it comes down to pulling it on a carpet, it isn't all that easy to pull. This model was available, uh, a later variant was available, basically the same as this, but the later one, instead of having the purple colour on the body, it was a red colour, still had this silver lid but all the purple bits on this would have been a red colour. This is very millennium looking isn't it? I don't know what it is about the millennium, if any of you remember the millennium you're either maybe not born or maybe you were too drunk, but for some reason I silver and purple are millennium colours, I don't know why that is. I remember my Christmas tree for the millennium 
It was all in silver and purple for some reason. So anyway, that's the machine itself. I'll just show you the tools that come with it. I think I've got all of them. Just a very basic tool set. You get this all-purpose nozzle, upholstery, stairs, curtains, that sort of thing. Car seats, you can use that. No thread pickers up. I don't think it ever had them. Some models would have had thread pickers, but I'm pretty sure this never had them. I don't think they've just worn away. I just think it never had the uh, thread and fibre pickers. And then you got this combined, a lot of cleaners do it, a combined nozzle. It's combined dusting brush and crevice nozzle. So you can have it in this position to use it as a crevice tool, down the side of your chairs, round your skirting board and things. Or if you want to do some dusting jobs, you just press this catch here. And well, you can either take that off, that comes completely off. Or you can leave it on when you're using it. But you can actually have the brush like that and do some dusting. I don't really like nozzles like this, it's a bit thin. It's alright in the car, as you can see it's quite, quite worn because it gives a nice sort of scrubbing action on the car seats just in the corners but I wouldn't use that on anything delicate. This is something that um, has been cheapened even further you see they have been able to make things even cheaper you know producing them in China that reduces costs but also they still, all manufacturers look to ways to make things cheaper so on later variants of this sort of nozzle if you can just see in there there's a little spring little bit of metal there. Well, the, the later ones I've seen, they don't even have a little spring. The, the catch is sort of moulded on. It's again to save costs and save time on the production line, I expect. But you don't even get something like that, little detail like that. that you don't tend to have that nowadays. So, that's your combined dusting tool. And I use the term loosely and crevice tool. Now here's the main nozzle. If I can reach over, your carpet and floor nozzle. Pretty bog standard, cheapo plastic. Now this is where they cut corners. At least they've made an effort of pretending that there are thread pickers here. But this is just some plastic coloured red. I can't see how any pet tears or difficult threads and fibres are ever going to be attracted to that. It's just a textured piece of plastic. Whereas in more expensive cleaners, in general, that would be like a velvet strip that does actually attract hairs. So that's basically the nozzle, carpet mode, it's all plastic, you've got your pedal here. So when you press the pedal down, it puts down the brush at the front and a squeegee at the back. Two little wheels and it's just a friction fit on there, no, no release buttons or clips, just the friction fit head, it's not really been used that, like I say it's mainly used for the car. Here's your extension tube, quite short actually, even fully extended, but again that doesn't really get used much, as it says, it's just for the car, so don't tend to use that, but it's telescopic at least, and at least it's metal. When they uh, were producing budget cleaners, especially in the 80s, you wouldn't have a metal tube, you'd normally have two plastic tubes. You'd only start getting metal tubes on sort of mid to high end models, but not on the bottom of the range where this machine was certainly at the bottom of the range when it was produced. But now even on, unless you're getting something very, very cheap, like a, a, like a bagless um, Argos value uh, or a Asda value uh, bagless vacuum, the very, very bottom ones, you can pick for up maybe £20, they will be plastic. But what do you expect? You're paying £20 for a vacuum cleaner. Not a very good vacuum cleaner, yes, I admit. So put those to one side, then you've got your hose. Not very long, it's probably about the length of a Miele S2 hose, which is pretty short. But it's quite strong, it's not showing any signs of splitting. You've got two release buttons either side when you're pulling, them, pulling the hose out. And there's a bit of strain relief here at the end. 
to help protect the hose from splitting at points of stress. And that's just a push fit. That so pushes on and it does swivel to a fashion. And like I say, to remove the hose, you just squeeze the two buttons either side and pull the hose out. And you've got your curved handle here. Again, nothing, nothing too exciting, but I thought I'm, a, I'm at my mum's house. I thought, mm, I forgot all about this vacuum. I'll show it. I'll show it to the YouTube public. Some people might find it interesting. So here we go, curved handle. And there's a little suction relief if you want to reduce suction briefly. If you're not using the electronic control on the machine, you've got this little slider which opens up this hole here which introduces air into the suction tube which obviously reduces the airflow at the end of the nozzle thus reducing suction it's quite neat actually that quite a neat little design located underneath often you find them on the top here but this one's underneath so it's quite easy as you're cleaning you can just go like that and of course your tube tube just pushes on to the end like that and of course your main carpet and floor nozzle just pushes on there and you'd adjust it upwards to start vacuuming with it right nearly over this just a quick one for today I'm just going to unplug well undo the flex not unplug it I haven't plugged it in yet but I'm going to pull out the flex plug it in and uh, we'll just uh, see it going all right, well, I've plugged, plugged this little Hoover Sprint in. I've just turned it on before I've uh, filmed it being on. And yes, of course, it's not silent. But what it doesn't have, and you'll find this on so many cheaply made vacuum cleaners, is the pitch. It's not necessarily the volume of the vacuum that's annoying. It can be the pitch and what some people refer to as screamers. Uh, other things are referred to as screaming or screamers, but in this content context, we're referring to a vacuum cleaner. So a vacuum cleaner can sound okay, but if it's got that high-pitched scream or whistle, that is what makes it uncomfortable to use. And you'll know what I mean if you've got a vacuum cleaner that's just got that high-end pitch, it's not pleasant. This, although not quiet, it doesn't, even at full power, it doesn't have that horrible screen which you can judge for yourself it's as I say in other videos I've done you it's hard to tell listening through the sound of this through your iPad or your phone or your computer it's hard to judge but anyway I'm still gonna turn it on so when I first switch it on it's going to be on its minimum setting and then it'll just turn it up so we can see how loud it gets Anyone who's sort of familiar with vacuums like I am, it sounds, the motor does sound pretty good. It's a pretty good motor, even when it slows down and it turns off, it just it just stops nice and smoothly. So really, it's a quite quite a good well-made little vacuum cleaner. And this would have retailed, I think this cost me about £50, 45 to £50. Pounds. Like I say, in the early 2000s, I think this this date so I did I bought this from brand new from um, Alders department store in York which obviously no longer exists in York or anywhere I think even Alders the Alders in Croydon was the last to go and that's a place I used to buy my earliest vacuum cleaners from when I lived down south in a place called East Grinstead in Sussex used to get on the train with my pocket money well it was loan sharking money actually I've got three brothers and two of them were very bad with their money and I had a little Saturday job at Sainsbury's and saved my money to buy various vacuum cleaners and uh, obviously they got paid on a Thursday by the weekend they were skint needed money for fags and whatever else 
teenage boys used to spend their money on motorbikes. And of course they came to their little brother. And I said, oh of course, I'm your brother, I'll help you. I'll give you some money, just write me an IOU. So I would lend him a tenner and the IOU would be for £15 to pay me back on the Thursday. And of course, the more they borrowed, the more they had to borrow and the more money I made out of them. So thanks to my brothers, two of my brothers, I bought quite a lot of vacuum cleaners. You might find that's not ethical, but you know, they spent their money too quick and I saved it. So it's not that way now, of course. I spend like there's no tomorrow, but who cares? Could be dead tomorrow, so why not spend while you can? So there we go, that's the Hoover Sprint. And uh, I'm sure before any of you make any comments, this I don't think is a genuine, you know, a, a sort of an original Hoover design. Certainly not a lot of the parts, because I do remember seeing, I think it was a Goblin or a Morphe Richards, or even a Goblin and a Morphe Richards, had these exact switches. So possibly a lot of the internal parts have been used before and maybe they've just given it a new body shell. But this is how things are nowadays. There's nothing, you don't get very much that's completely original. Certainly in the machines that come from China. But anyway, for the time, for, for 50 quid, despite the fact it, it isn't very stable, it was quite a good vacuum. Thought I'd show you it anyway just while I'm here. Thanks for watching, stay tuned, lots more to come.